Hello Lazy Nation, this is Lazy Eye here and I am reviewing the book Harleen 2. So in the book, uh, Harleen finished the interview where it left off on book one and she feels very frustrated with Mr. J, the Joker, um, because she feels like that he told that story before to her previous psychiatrist. So, of course, Harley wants more out of the Joker and she just finds herself by herself drinking and trying to figure out how to get through to him. So at the moment, Harley is sitting by herself, thinking to herself, figuring out ways to get through uh, Mr. J, Joker, um, as she get a call from Dr. Matthews about getting the interview with the commissioner, Gordon. And with Matthews calling about the Gordon interview, she basically tells Harley about hold off on Mr. Dent. Harley had no idea what was going on in the news. Um, apparently this is where Mr. Dent turns into Two-Face. Um, she comes on the TV and it's everywhere. Boom. So as Harley turns on the TV, Dent is giving an interview. And as he's getting an interview, um, he was interrupted by Salvador Marooney. Um, and as he was being interrupted, Marooney uh, famously spills acid on his face. Famously meaning uh, Mr. Dent turns into Two-Faced. Uh, Maruni was pissed about um, how he handled one of his cases with his, one of his family members and got upset and spilled acid right in his face and that's how Mr. So we are introduced to the executioners at this point and these are police officer, undercover police officer in the Gotham Police and they take advantage of the law and taking the law in their own hands and they kill Salvador Maruni. So Harley ends up interviewing the commissioner um, so she can interview the police. The, the point of meeting the commissioner is to get in front of the policemen and interview them so she can have a better understanding for her research. Uh, the commissioner, this is a really bad time for the commissioner as you can tell Dent, you know, got acid for in his face. So Harley managed to get the commissioner to call the bat, the Batman, and to ask him a very important question. Harley was better off asking Batman a question instead of interviewing the police. Um, the police was very sketchy. The Gotham City didn't know which police officer were executioners or which police officer were legitimately police. And quite frankly, the police officers were paranoid of each other at this point. Um, and Harley, doing her research she wants to help these killers instead of locking them up she wants to help them and seek treatment and he asked she asked batman can these killers be helped deep down we all know that harley's asking um can the joker be helped um but that's a very important question harley wanted to ask from the batman himself can these killers be helped instead of throwing them in jail can we seek them treatment? Can we help them? And why does the bat doesn't kill? What is what is his reasoning of why the Batman doesn't kill? And Harley wanted those answers. So Harley catches herself at a state where she cannot focus on her job. Um, she's just not giving a full attentive attention to any of her patients. Um, the Joker's on her mind. Um, so she's basically avoiding the Joker, much like the first book, uh, this time she's not having as intense dreams. Um, basically just ADHD, you know, in her brain um, as she's trying to take the Joker out of her head. She's just not giving any attention to her clients, her patients at the moment. Funny, um, Harley and uh, Ivy have a very flirty moment in this book. Um, I'm not sure if any of you DC fans um, know that uh, Harley and Ivy have a thing, have a fling going on. So I thought it was very funny and very fun how Stefan added Ivy into this um, book and uh, played on to the readers who, like myself, who was familiar with Ivy and Harley's relationship.
And once again, Harley has to succumb to her demons, most like the first book, and face the Joker again. And uh, this time, she wanted to ask him a very important question. She wanted to ask him his losses. What have, who have he lost and why he became the, the man that he's become today? And um, has he felt any remorse um, at the moment? Um, Harley is frustrated and trying to find an answer and the Joker is not necessarily um, giving giving in to her. Um, he rants off about his obsession with the Batman, with the Bat, Batman. Um, and Harley wants him to focus on the question and the Joker is frustrated and it's like, no, I know exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to create, you're trying to write a book about him. and. Harley's like, no, 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 that's not me at all. I, would, I could never do anything like that. And this is this is where Har, um, Harleen Quinzel uh, turns into Harley Quinn because I'm not saying that she made the biggest mistake. I'm not sure if that's the biggest mistake she's ever made, but um, she unties uh, the Joker and she freed him. And the book stops there. The book ends where Harley uh, unties the Joker and the Joker brushes up on Harley and gave her a big hug and you can just see in her eyes the lust of fulfillment and um, and yeah Stephen Cedric ends the book right there so um, yeah man it's crazy crazy thank you guys so much for watching another review uh, from Lazy Eye here thank you and you guys continue to watch my videos. I will be reviewing book three of Harley. I appreciate you guys um, and thank you.